Hello, this is Mr. Philippeck, and this video is going to be a little bit of a meiosis review. And at the end of this video, we're going to talk just a little bit about comparing and contrasting meiosis with mitosis. And so in this picture here in front of you, uh, we see basically the events of meiosis. And I know the directions talk about labeling homologous chromosomes, tetrads, and all that other good stuff. Uh, but I really think the important thing here is the first thing we're going to do is take a little line and draw it right down here. And the reason is, is that when we do that, we're going to begin to split this into two sections. And we're going to label the left side here with a numeral 1 and uh, the right side here with a Roman numeral 2. Because if you remember with meiosis, it's basically mitosis squared, or two rounds of cell division. And if you remember, uh, the cell cycle, uh, basically we have, um, you know, I, P, M, A, T, and a C. Um, a, a nice way to remember this is I, Pilates, Matt, Cool. And uh, this first cell here is in interphase. And if you remember in interphase, we have those three stages or subcycles within interphase. G1, uh, where the cell grows. S, where the DNA copies. And then G2, where the cell makes all its final preparations for cell division. Um, you know, we're in here. And so the next spot here is prophase. And it's in here where crossing over can occur. All right. And so what do we mean by crossing over? Well, chromosomes, when they line up or they kind of pair up, it's like a square dance where they have to find their partner. Uh, what happens here is that sometimes uh, the DNA from one cell can swap uh, with the DNA of another. All right, so if these two things were to kind of cross over here, whereby they would exchange gen genetic information, uh, actually what we'd end up seeing is, is uh, some recombinations of uh, these chromosomes. And so what we call this here is these are homologous chromosomes. Uh, remember that in our cells we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. One from mom and one from dad. And so when they uh, kind of pair up and kind of swap genetic information, which give rise to the 64 million different combinations that humans can have. So the next stage after prophase is metaphase 1. And again, we want to focus in on how these chromosomes are lining up. And that didn't work out the way I wanted it. Um, basically, look how these chromosomes are lining up. It's much like what we have right down here. Okay? And when these chromosomes line up, and I like to sing the Bubble Guppy song, line up, everybody line up, line up. Because really, uh, they're side by side. And they form what is known as a tetrad. And this is a little different because remember in normal uh, metaphase and what we see in metaphase 2, typically the chromosomes line up a uh, single file line. But because when we divide, we want to end up with haploid cells, they line up side by side. All right. And so when we enter in anaphase 1, and actually I'm going to call this next slide anaphase and telophase kind of combined. Uh, these chromosomes go that way, these chromosomes go that way, and what ends up happening is at this point, and I think it's important to kind of draw a line here, at this point, right after this line right here, everything going this way, all these cells are now going to be haploid from here on out. And that's because this chromosome is going to go that way, and that chromosome is going to end up in that cell, and so what ends up happening is, is now these cells right here only have half the genetic information they should. Even though the chromosomes look like this, it's basically uh, two uh, of the same chromosome, meaning that you know this chromatid and this chromatid are exactly the same. Okay. And so what happens then is right after telophase one, there is no interphase. And that's because we don't want the chromosomes redoubling. Otherwise, we're right back to square one. And so we immediately hop right into uh, prophase. But this is prophase two, because this is the second uh, set of cell division. And again, we have metaphase. 
And then again, here we have anaphase and telophase again, until we end up with four genetically unique cells. And all of these cells have 23 chromosomes in humans. Uh, which brings up the next thing. We call this haploid, right? That's the haploid number. The diploid number of chromosomes in humans, does anybody remember? I'll give you a second. That's right. The diploid number is 46. All right, so all, so the, the chromosome number in here is 46, and then anything after this purple line to the right, all these cells only have 23 chromosomes. In the next slide, we're going to kind of talk a little bit about the different consequences of making sperm and eggs. And so in males, in males, we start off with one cell here. And inside that cell, the original cell, remember, it's going to have 46 chromosomes. And so we're going to go undergo this first division, which is meiosis 1. And we end up with two cells. And then remember, at this point in time, uh, these cells now only have 23 chromosomes at this time. But remember, they're paired up. So they kind of look like this. There's two chromosomes. And uh, in the middle of those chromosomes is a little device that is meant to hold them together. And hopefully you remember that that's called a centromere. Okay, So each of these cells only contain uh, 23 chromosomes. And then again, uh, we're going to go through a second meiotic division where we're going to end up with four separate sperm cells each with only 23 chromosomes in each cell. So just kind of a little reminder each of these only have 23 cells. They're each cell, each sperm cell here is genetically unique which means that depending on which egg they fertilize are going to come up with uh, four different people. Now on the flip side an egg cell we start off with one cell, and again, that cell has 23 chromosomes, pardon me, 46, 46 chromosomes. And again, we're going to go under uh, meiosis 1, but what we begin to see is an unequal distribution of cytoplasm. Because at the end result here, we want to end up, after the second meiotic division, we're going to end up with one ginormous egg cell and then three little cells called polar bodies. And each of these cells uh, still have 23 chromosomes in them, okay, just like a sperm cell, but all the cytoplasm is relegated to the one cell that's going to become the egg. And so a female produces one egg plus three, we'll just call them PBs, for polar bodies. So that's an important distinguish. A uh, distinguishing fact here is that we get four sperm cells in the case of males, and then we get one egg and three polar bodies with females. And so I thought with this slide we could take a couple of seconds and just quickly review uh, mitosis and what the end results are here. And so remember with mitosis, we start off with one egg with 46 cells, and at the end result of one cell division, we end up with two new cells, each with, again, 46 chromosomes. So these cells are identical to the parent cell. And remember, we call these cells daughter cells. And so where do we typically find these types of cell divisions? In all of our body cells. So skin, hair, nails, nose hair, toenails, heart, um, ovaries, okay, the, the actual organ itself. Okay, undergoes uh, mitosis to build more ovary cells. All right, and so basically any body cell in your body undergoes mitosis. Now on the flip side here, we have meiosis. And again, we start off with one cell that has 46 chromosomes. But then as that cell divides, and again, remember, right after that first meiotic division, we end up with a couple of cells here that have only 23 chromosomes. And then they divide again, and then we end up with four cells, each with 23 chromosomes. Change the color here for you so it's easier to see. 23, 23, 23. And remember with a um, male, if I just flip back to the last slide, we end up with four distinct sperm cells, 
Whereas with the female, we end up with one egg and then three polar bodies. Okay? So, uh, to quickly review, if we want new body cells, what type of division are we going to undergo? I'll give you a second. That's right. It's going to be mitosis. All right, because we want each new cell to have an exact copy of that DNA. And then what is it if we need to make uh, more eggs or sperm? So we'll call those new sex cells. Or I think we also call them germ cells. What do we need? You're right, we need meiosis. Okay, and so I hope this was a nice little review where we compared and contrasted uh, mitosis and meiosis. And best of luck on the test, and thanks for listening.